In order to hold our tool rigidly in a vertical mill, some very bright guys dreamed up some ingenious methods for us. Probably the most popular is the use of our R8 collets. As I mentioned earlier, we always want to buy good quality collets. Hardinge, good American made, brown and sharp collets. They'll come in a set of 15, 20 collets, depending upon the increments that you want to work them with. By far the most popular would be 1 8, 3 30 seconds, 5 16, 3 8, half, 5 8, and 3 quarters. You'll see the numbers in most cases stamped on top of the collet. This particular collet is made by the folks at Hardinge and it's a 3 8 diameter. So this is going to take all of our 3 8 type end mills, drills, reamers, etc. Here's another Hardinge in a 3 quarter. Okay, this is going to take a pretty good size end mill. We'll use this collet if we're doing a lot of roughing material. Some folks get a little excited and feel that the end mill has the possibility or potential of slipping in a collet and they've come up with an interesting concept as well called a tool holder. This is a very expensive tool holder made by the folks at AccuPro. Very rigid R8 collet design, machined integral with a heavy boss and a three-quarter inch precision hole that has been ground. It will accept our three-quarter inch end mill. You can see that we've got our flat on the top of it and our large set screw here. So in order to apply this correctly, we simply loosen the set screw, push our end mill into place, tighten our set screw down against the flat that we showed you earlier, and that locks our end mill rigidly in place. It's very important when we apply an end mill to the tool holder or the collet that we choke it up really close. We don't want a tremendous length protruding from the tool holder. This makes for a very unrigid setup. In some applications it may be necessary to extend the cutter out farther because we've got a deep hole to machine into or we've got a boss that is interrupting that. For that type of machine work you cannot use this type of tool holder because it is regulated by the flat that we see on the cutter. It's a big advantage of a collet system in my opinion because with a collet it allows us to be able to infinitely adjust the length or depth of our tool. Ideally, if we were going to use this V-block form cutter that we have here, we'd want to choke it up really close to the collet. Okay, you can see we've got it choked up right on the end there. But if we have a deep hole to reach or a hard to get place, we can infinitely pull this collet out within reason and expose more of the cutter. Remember, we're losing a little bit of rigidity, but we still need to get into the deep hole to cut, so some sacrifices are going to have to be made. A good rule of thumb when trying to determine how much cutter we can expose from the collet is one and a half times the diameter of the shank that we are using. Okay, and again, this is going to apply to the different types of materials that we are using, the depth and feed rate of the cut that we're doing. Anytime that we extend the cutter out from the collet or the tool holder, keep in mind we want to slow down our feed rate a little bit, take a minute amount of material off because we have lost a little bit of rigidity in the holding process. So that's a good versatile way to deal with a collet system. Again, with the big ball end mill properly installed, we would want it butted up right against the end of the collet. In some cases, we can extend it out, but not very far. When we're dealing with form tools, depending upon the tooling that we've designed, we always want to keep our form tool as rigid as possible. We've got a special form that's been ground into the cutter allowing us a very precise profile in the milling operation. We've spent quite a bit of money to have this profile machined, so we don't want to damage or break the cutter. Keep that in mind as well in your machining. Another useful tool that we'll be using in the mill is a drill chuck. This particular chuck is made by the folks at Albrecht. It's called an Albrecht keyless chuck. For those of you that purchased our instructional course on the lathe, you'll see that we used an Albrecht keyless chuck in the tailstock. It's got a big knurled band and we simply with a twisting action of the wrist we can tighten the jaws around our drill or end mill. We'll show you some neat tips and tricks on using an end mill in the drill chuck in special applications. It's not really rigid enough by comparison to a tool holder or a collet but in some applications it can be quite useful 
when we want to machine or recess or counter bore a pocket at the same time we're using a center drill. So having good chucks, spend the money on them. Don't buy a cheap imported chuck. Get a good American made or European chuck like an Albrecht or a Jacobs to complete your selection of accessories for the mill. All right, that pretty well covers the tool holders. Now let's take a look at some of the different types of cuts that these end mills and profile cutters will produce.